We are in Covington, Louisiana on the north shores of Lake Pontchartrain. We're visiting a local brewery and indulging in some savory Cajun cuisine. To top it off, we stumble upon a wildlife safari. Did not expect that at all. Y'all might be happy to know, Cody is feeling 100% better. I think it's been two days since the last video and I don't feel horrible at all. However, Angel Princess received it. The gift that just keeps on giving. I don't really feel bad. I'll just have congestion. <clears throat> so here we are. Where we slept last night is Fontainebleau State Park, which is a Louisiana State Park on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain, which is just north of New Orleans. But there's two main attractions to the state park. One is a beach on Lake Pontchartrain, but number two are these oak trees covered in moss. Now the main attraction of the state park is this beach. Isn't this park beautiful? But now we're gonna head into a town that's north called Covington and there is a, I don't know if it's a hot spring, but there's a spring there with spring water. So we gotta go check that out. The real reason Kelly wants to go to the spring isn't because of the spring. It's because there's a brewery there. It's Kelly's favorite root beer that's ever been made and it's made with the spring water from the spring. Kelly, can you see the little happiness in my face? Just yeah, because you just twitched her mouth like that. I'm just so happy right now. I love being back in the south. I love the moisture in the air, the trees, the smells of the ocean. I do too. So this is called Abita. There's the Abita Springs and the Abita Brewery we're gonna go see here in a minute. So I'm sure you've probably heard of that before. I knew it was in Louisiana, but I didn't know it was in this area until we came here. And we're gonna walk up to the spring here. So where's the water? I think it's broken. They, oh no, it's not broken. So you have to push this little button here and then, and then it comes up. It's so soft. Yeah. It's cold, cool. Very cold. I guess you could fill your jugs or your water bottle or whatever. And this is what the brewery brews their beer with. So this is the Abita Brewery and it is like a entire operation. This is my kind of patio right here. So how was your root beer that you traveled all this way for? Very refreshing, very refreshing. Well, Kelly and I returned back to Fontainebleau State Park and we weren't gonna record any of this. We were just coming back to do a trail run together and meet y'all at dinner because we wanted some Cajun tonight. But as we're sitting here, I started looking at the sun's angles at the trees of the Spanish moss again and the fact that earlier there was nobody taking photos at all. There was no photographers. Kelly and I were basically by ourselves. Now there's three or four different groups of people taking family pictures. This has to be the best time then for us to show y'all the true beauty of these trees. Normally Kelly is the go-to for whenever it comes to looking at Google Maps, reading all the reviews, looking at the food pics, but Cody did it this time because I think this is gonna be some good Cajun. If it's not, it's my fault. And it's called The Chimes. And I can tell you one thing, all the locations around here play some good 90s music. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know, they know what they're doing. With like Cajun Kick, we're starting out the gumbo. That's all there. The bread's really good too. And there's whole chunks of blue crab in there. You don't get that every day. The next dish we're trying is the crab stuffed mushrooms. 
it was highly recommended by our waitress this evening. That's delicious. Now I know I'm trying to stick with the Cajun style food, however, they have a seafood lasagna and I like to eat strange things that I've never got to experience before, so I have to try the seafood lasagna and Kelly got the catfish Purdue. Let me try your sauce. That's good. We're back home at the campground and we're full. Go ahead and tell them, Kelly. Go ahead and tell them. It was delicious. And? Cody did very well picking out the restaurant. Do you hear this? But I've got a situation. I've got a knot in my necklace if you're wondering what I'm doing. Gotta get that out. But we have a big day tomorrow. So we're gonna try to hit the hay pretty early. We've been doing good. We got up at seven this morning, no alarm. So we're gonna try to get up at seven again tomorrow. This morning, you know we're near New Orleans, so we decided we're gonna stuff our face with fried bread and powdered sugar. Can you guess where we're going? Cafe Du Monde. We probably fantasize about Cafe Du Monde at least once a day, maybe once I would a week. Say at least twice a year. Talk about twice a day. So you're talking about the healthiest breakfast on the face of the planet here. Makes you big and strong. It's everything I dream of. So what we're doing today is coming to a safari park where they take you around in a vehicle to see giraffes and a whole bunch of other animals. But apparently- There's a giraffe right there. Yeah, we're just looking at giraffes right now. You know how bad Kelly's been wanting to do an activity like this? There's one about to cross the road. This is crazy. They're just out here. There's no fence right here. So this is called the Global Wildlife Safari Park, and this is the most wild animal activity I've ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh, how cute, look at their tail. Good Lord, I thought that was a statue. What kind of cow is that? A monster. Look at their horns. Good Lord. The Global Wildlife Center is one of the largest free roaming safari parks in the country with over 3,500 exotic and endangered species of animals from around the world. We have both been wanting to do a safari park like this for years. The one thing holding us back is a lot of them you drive yourself through and we can't drive this through those parks because of our height in most cases. But when we found out one of the largest ones in the country was here, we had to come. So is it a definite possibility that I would be able to feed a giraffe if I It is not a definite possibility because it, it is a free people. roaming, yeah, a lot of people and it is a free roaming Hi. facility, so the animals do what they want when they want. Oh, you know, go go big. We'll I do mean, the it's a 50-50 chance. Like you said, you have all kinds of cows and stuff? Okay, oh. we'll do the $35 budget. We are doing a tour to see a lot of these animals, but some of them we can just see right here as we're waiting. Kelly wants to see kangaroos. These guys are laid out. I'm worried about that one. You worried about that one? Yeah. <laughs> the kangaroo I was worried about woke up. It's not dead. There he is. Go ahead. That's just how they sleep. They're gonna sleep like humans. What's a capybara? Capybara is a. <gasps> I know what a capybara is. Yeah. It's the world's there largest is. rodent. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh. I've never seen one of these in my life. This is Kelly and I on any hiking trail, wherever we go. The other one is Gaia, the other one is Ninja. Okay. Ninja's uh, much younger, she's pretty much new. She's only been here for a couple of months. Gaia's about 10 years old. Oh. She just follows them around. Like, <laughs> and what kind of tortoises are these? Cicada. Cicada, okay. Yes, they are the third largest tortoise in the world. So Mikhail will be our tour guide for today, Hi. showing <laughs> us around. And what's the chances of us getting to feed a giraffe today? Oh, uh, I would say at least 98%. I was, it was a weird thing that they would 
any like something weird would have to happen for you to not be able to feed these giraffes today, especially on a private tour. We can go right up to them. Okay. So definitely don't see any reason why they shouldn't eat from us today. Zebras are the only ones that we have to worry about. We do not feed our zebras while we are on tour. They unfortunately don't know how to share very well. <laughs> So they're going to bump other animals out of the way to get to that food and say, no, this is mine, I'm not sharing. So they're fed separately. They are fed definitely, but they are fed separately. We're going to go into Pinsgower 7. Okay. That's what these vehicles are called. They are old, just army vehicles. All right, honey. I was just about a half a couple at a time. Okay. That will help you with your bucket because it is about an hour long tour. That's going to be a little bit loud, but I'll have a little bit of a headset to talk to y'all. This little fellow's back here. <laughs> Come on. And a lot of people feel bad for the deer and they think they don't get enough or enough attention, which is not true. But they also are the ones that keep our grass trimmed. We don't cut oh, our grass. Yeah. They eat all of That's our grass. True. That's true. All right, guys, you ready? Right. <laughs> Pulling up. Now oh, he's scratching the side of his head. Bye, bro. Y'all have a good one. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Yeah, he's a he's big. He's a gentle giant. Now the rest of them are so energetic because they're so young. They're like having a puppy, yeah. but a giant puppy. Now this is our only matured stag. Oh, this look. is Meister. Whoa. And hey Meister, you. Uh, yeah. You now, are. The rack you. Is up it's about 20 pounds. Wow. That's a lot of weight up there. Mm -hmm. This one has followed us nonstop. Okay, I'm having the time of my life yeah, right now. Is this one of the greatest days of your life? This is one of the greatest days of my life. This is well worth it. On the left side, you'll see this Indian black buck. Like I said, they have a testosterone driven coat. So that means the more they fight and the more they mate, the darker they become. This is a fully matured Indian black buck. And you can see how different they look from the females behind him. Well, oh, he is full of... Oh, wow. He's beautiful. Now, another species of deer we have is called Father David deer. Now, they're called Father David David deer or Chinese swamp deer. They are actually extinct in the wild. They came from a remaining 18 in the world. So since they have such a small gene pool, they will never re really be able to fully recover. <laughs> it's so interesting to see the animals that keep to certain tours. 
it does not always the same animal that follows certain tours. Really? Absolutely. Wow. The zebu don't normally follow. Why are the only one that can follow? Well, y'all, yeah, stay out of trouble. We do have some other animals too that we can get to as well. Oh my gosh! Why are you running? <laughs> Okay, this is too cool. Now this is Amari. Amari is just about to make one year old this in one? March. I'm gonna do my hand. Absolutely, you can oh. do your hand. It's perfectly safe. And these are all reticulated oh. giraffes. They are the second most endangered species of giraffe. Nonetheless, I checked, there are only about 17,000 of them left. And there's 117,000 giraffes. Left. This is oh, cool. Oh, you are learning from your mama. You go into that bucket. <laughs> Here you go. You're so gentle. Are they are they... very gentle, gentle giants. Wow. I did not expect a giraffe to be this gentle. They do like to go directly to the source. If you don't mind that, feel them behind the ears if you get close enough. It feels like velvet. It's the softest part of their body. So right here is the softest? It's the softest part of their body behind the ears. Perfect. Whoa. Wow, that is soft. We're going to run out of food. I know. This is so cool. This is so cool. <laughs> wow. Okay. You're good. Gosh, that one's really dark. That's Jet. Now, Jet came from a zoo. We do tend to train out our males to keep our lineage clean. So he's been here for a few years. But he doesn't know what petting means. So if you to reach a hand towards her, he might just back up like Amari did. He may also she may also get that from her dad. Like you'll see, she has a bit of a almost moth. I moved the food up and she still went all the way up here. <laughs> yeah, I think we're almost out. Now I did bring a second bucket in case y'all wanted to purchase it. Those are the coolest eyes I've ever seen. You do like to take the cup. There you go. <laughs> so this is the male, the only male here? Yes. And he's very, very cautious, right? You said he's he very timid, yes. Very timid. He's not like our other girls that tend to just help themselves. Like Miss Sarah. Gosh, his his hooves are so huge. They're just so chill and like, oh, no. <laughs> just patiently waiting. And then they're sneaky too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I didn't realize they were surrounding us. <laughs> I guess we'll go ahead and buy that other bucket. Okay. Since we're completely out. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I have applied and they put me onto it. They put me onto it. Man, he is massive. Can you feed them wow. by throwing them to the fence or? Yeah, you can feed them by throwing them into the fence. This thing is very itchy, starting to sort of shed some of that fur oh. into, the, into the fence. That is another species where my, my females and my males both have fur and they tend to break off. And that's, that's okay, that's perfectly normal. Now they are pack animals. If you ever think about getting a donkey as a pet, Get something. Yeah. It's clinically depressive. It's by itself. Sounds like me. <laughs> they have to be bonded with something. They have to. They are too sweet to be alone. Now we have Becky, Betty, Bruce, and this is Mr. Mike Bison. <laughs> Mr. Mike, Mike Bison. Now, Mr. Mike Bison, I will warn you. He likes to nudge if you don't give him enough attention. Uh -huh. So he'll put his nose on you. Don't forget, you have a towel. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So don't be afraid to pet. You can actually pet them, feel how dense their wool is. They can withstand about a week's worth of snow on their back without it melting. Wow. Your friend came back. Oh my goodness. Oh, she's there. She <laughs> Man, that is a dense fur. Mm -hmm. I'm talking. I don't know. There's a sort of kind of You've been waiting ones. for us. I know you have. But they will never out the public. I feel it's cheap that I'll do this. Oh my gosh. It's like a blanket. Isn't it? It's like a warm blanket. 
I think it's bad when I get stuff in my beard. <laughs> you doing good there, Cole? There's a lot. What? <gasps> well, he's very, very sweet. He's a good boy. You can hand feed Lolly. Oh, okay. That's what we call that prehensile lip. We they grab their lips. Can I no, pet Mama this one? From South I'm sorry? Can I pet? Absolutely. So soft. Oh, here comes another lava. From South America. This is Shadow. I think he's Shadow. Now, the thing with Lolly is he doesn't bond too much with our other llamas. He bonds with our alpacas. So you'll see our alpacas are coming up and you'll see the difference between their sizes and their ears. If you see the llama ears, they are long banana shaped ears. Whereas alpacas have triangular straight ears. You can see it from here. And so this is the llama? Yes. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, the, the little one is the llama. Uh, sorry, the little one is the alpaca. And the big one is the llama. So llama alpaca, okay. Don't they spit at you? They, at each other. At each uh, other, okay. Okay. Which one's Lucy? This one. Oh, right in front. Oh, Lucy's coming around. There we go. Wait, is this Lucy? This one's Lucy with the circular horns. Okay, Lucy, come here. Lucy, the watch you see. There. Now, feel free to feel their horns. I would just watch your hands. These horns are so warm, so she's saying that there's blood vessels just pumping right through these horns at a high volume, and it cools it. You said it cools them off in the summer? Yeah. So does that do lap flap, that little neck skin flap, it's the same thing. There's blood rushing through it, it's pulled up by the air, and returned back to the body. We do have a whole chart for them. There's also uh, Weeboo, and then we have Walnut, which is a small one over there. <laughs> You're hungry. Y'all ever been around kids and they're like, their parents are like, you act like you don't get fed. <laughs> it's like that. They act like they don't get fed. I can see that. They're just eager. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> So much fun. This was one of the greatest days of my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> you did such a great did. job. <laughs> I'm so glad you had a good time. Out of all the things we have done where we had to pay a fee for, I strongly suggest if you're ever in the New Orleans area, come do this. So much fun. Well worth it. Well worth it. <clears throat> Never in a million years would I have been able to feed a giraffe from the palm of my hand. Yeah. We are starving and tonight for dinner i'm going to be making a pepperoni pizza now i've already got my dough it's been rising for an hour so what i'm going to do is flour my board here and then we're going to split that dough in half because i like to make two smaller pizzas we've got an eight inch skillet and i'm going to use my new 10 inch skillet as well my dough is very sticky today all right first runner up now I like to bake my dough before I put any toppings on it. So we're going to put this in the oven and let it crisp up for about 10 minutes and then pull it back out and put our toppings on. We're also going to caramelize a purple onion. So I'm going to get that sliced up. Now that our butter is melted, we're going to throw in our onion. Meanwhile, while the onion is cooking, we're going to make a tomato sauce. All right, we're going to throw in our garlic, some fennel, and red pepper flakes. Stir that around, saute for a couple seconds. Okay, we're gonna throw in our salt. Tomato paste, oregano, some salt and pepper. Do a pinch of sugar. And the last thing is gonna be the fresh basil. And we're just gonna let this simmer until it thickens. Our oven is heated up, so we're gonna go ahead and throw in our first pizza dough. It's time to build our first pizza. So we've got our tomato sauce, some hot sauce. We like to keep it spicy around here. And then I like to do just a little bit of cheese. Now we're gonna put our onions on. Okay, I like to do a little more cheese. Ooh, these are some good pepperonis. Then I like to put my pepperonis on top. Let's go in with this pizza in the oven. First pizza down. Out of all the pizzas I've ever had in my life, 
This, hands down, is my favorite pizza. You love that one. It's my favorite. I'm a pepperoni fan, and this is the best pepperoni pizza. But we're going to eat this delicious pizza, and we're going to eat that second pizza, too. So we'll catch you on the other. See you on the next one. We're in Covington, <laughs> Why is it so funny? Why is I'm just it so funny? looking at your face. <laughs> Okay, whoo, this is hard to record. Okay, I am not good at this. This is usually what Kelly does. Anywho, we're in Covington, Louisiana. <laughs> we're in Covington, Louisiana. <laughs> but you gotta get over your sickness so you can record this. <laughs> I need a tissue. <laughs>